Welcome to this Intensive Care Nurse and Journal Club. My name is Paul Ross. I'm from the Intensive Care Unit at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, Australia, and also La Trobe University. So today's Journal Club, we're going to look at the PRECEVA trial, so the prone position in severe ARDS and the effect of early application in severe ARDS patients. So the intervention compared prone position to supine. The patients would met odds criteria, as you can see in figure one here. You see all the study design and criteria inclusion and randomization. Patients had received were intubated and ventilated for less than 36 hours. So an important point to discuss is this is early classification and diagnosis of odds and providing an intervention at an early phase. It's not rescue last-ditch manoeuvres. The protocol for the patients randomised to the prone position. They were positioned within one hour of randomisation. And importantly, they were positioned for 16 hours. It's longer than previous of the studies, probably six to seven hours maximum. These, these patients were in the prone position for 16 hours. And all groups were ventilated, similar to the, to the odds net recommendations at the time. And we'll look at the comparison between the prone and supine group later. And um, we're going to focus on this journal club on the outcome and 28-day mortality and the 90-day mortality. The study had ethics approval. There was a steering committee, had independent data and safety monitoring board as well. And there was no commercial support involved in this research. So going into the enrolment, randomization and follow-up, the 27 intensive cares were involved. It's 26 from France, one from Spain. And importantly, they were experienced intensive cares with the prone position. So staff were familiar, nurse and medical. There was no quick training to upskill staff. This was part of routine practice across these intensive cares. And in 474 patients were enrolled, eight were excluded. The paper does state the limitations of patients who weren't included, who could have been, and also those eight patients, why they were excluded, including some protocol breach. But importantly, they didn't include them in the results. Patients were randomly assigned, and this was conducted by computer generation. Patients, the blinding was not possible. It's easy to see a patient in a prone position in the intensive care. So it was not appropriate and not discussed that any further from there. They did discuss the exclusion and follow-up. And as I say, they did state the limitations throughout the paper. So randomization characteristics after um, inclusion in the study. Very similar. Only a couple of points really to highlight. The SOFA score, the severity of illness in the supine group was higher. And the use of vasopressors, also I must highlight this is at the point of inclusion. And use of vasopressors in the supine group also a little higher than in the prone group. In the prone group, higher, had a higher um, population of patients requiring ne neuromuscular blockers but no other factors standing out in regards to the characteristics. These three factors were, the, the results were adjusted also, but didn't have any impact on the final outcome results, which we'll talk about soon. So let's have a look at the ventilation protocol between the prone and supine. So the same actual ventilation protocol followed, and these are the actual results and settings that were found across the 27 ICUs as part of the results. So table two here highlights the study was well controlled. The units followed the protocol. I don't have any data to see the separate ICUs, but as a combined 27 intensive care population, the, all you can say is there was really well followed and protocol was maintained. So real positive element of the study. So let's focus on the results here. And as I say, the focus of today's um, journal club is getting into the mortality aspect. So the 28-day mortality for the prone group was 16% versus 32.8 for the supine. So this study does actually have an outcome mortality benefit. This also follows through to the 90-day mortality point with a 23.6% mortality for the prone 
versus 41% for the supine group. The study states nil differences in regards to power with adverse events and minimal complications. And just to highlight some of the elements were there were six more inadvertent or unplanned extubations in the prone group, and um, not statistically significant. And um, there was actually less bleeding occurrences um, in the prone group and less cardiac arrest in the prone group as well. Maybe the, the highlight the point of the experienced intensive cares. Maybe these are the impactors that reduce the, the complications in using intensive cares that are experienced in the actual intervention. The results, the study do state that patients did require nitric oxide and ECMO therapy, but it did reduce the need for these interventions. So part of the journal club, I'd like to for you to have a little think about this paper in relation to your practice, whether this is standard care, some that may have dropped off over years, or something to really consider and is it relevant for your for your unit and also the impact of the early intervention in these odds patients. So I took the questions to the intensive care nurse educators at the Alfred Intensive Care and some of the discussion points were the real focus about the early intervention into the odds patients. The, the, the nurse educators, the Alfreds is a ECMO specialist centre, so it probably wouldn't re be replacing the ECMO therapy from there. They do use nitric oxide, eprosinol, pre very occasionally oscillator therapy as well. But it was a discussion point to have that not all patients fit ECMO, oscillator, nitric. And so it's good to have a, a therapy with the, also the impact factor of the mortality outcome. So it definitely generated discussion amongst the team and also escalated, let's say, the impact factor of having the mortality. It really got the nurse educators discussing, you know, the relevance for practice and further discussion with the medical team of the the sort of the points when prone position will be utilized and will it be brought in at an earlier phase and also patients prolonged for a longer period of time as well. So just to summarize, this is a well-designed and performed study with actual mortality outcomes. And it's a simple intervention. It can be pretty much a nurse-led um, procedure with the qualified anaesthetist control in the airway. So it definitely has a positive impact on nursing and also, more importantly, the patient outcomes. It does re reduce the need for expensive or really skilled expertise ECMO therapy and also reduces the need for nitric oxide therapies and probably highlights as well the need for specialist um, intensive cares to introduce these um, adjuncts to the ARDS patients and to introduce them early as well in those intubated and ventilated patients hidden ARDS criteria. Thank you for your time. You can see here the references we used. The main one was the Perceiver Study Group 2013. If anyone has any questions or would like to discuss or be involved with Online Nurse and Journal Club, please contact me on paul.ross at latrobe.edu.au. Thank you very much and we'll see you soon.